to all the dear students of IMS, uh, it's a pleasure to onboard the panelists that we have got in the session. This session is going to be very informative for you to understand what it takes to clear the application stage or let's say the screening stage of Wellington for both the campuses of Bombay and Bangalore. We have got uh, Professor Deepa Dixit, who is a Senior Associate Dean at Lee School Bombay. We have got someone who's already studying in the second year of Lee School Campus Bombay, Shredi Mehta. Uh, Deepa, ma'am, first of all, thank you so much for taking time out and talking to students. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, ma'am, uh, from your perspective, the first thing that students are looking at to understand is if you can help us to understand the entire journey of the selection process at Lee School. Mm -hmm. right? The application stage. Till the time students get their desired outcome, which is their desired seat at either Wellington campus, Bombay, or the Bangalore campus. Mm. The pages of each stage, right from application, psychometric test, group activity, personal interview. Um, if there's something beyond that, the college looks at um, from the weightage perspective. And what does V school look at from the candidates in each and every stage too? Okay. Um so uh, good morning everybody and uh, thank you abhijit again more for having me uh, on this platform so if i have to take you through the journey of uh, the wellinger from the wellinger application form to the last stage you know where you uh, get admission into some of the other program that you may be interested in so the application for phase 2 as you know is already on yeah now uh, when you are applying currently you can apply with any of the uh, the students can apply with any of the scores that they have. Mm -hmm. Of course, CMAT exam and results will come. So they can mm -hmm. update that score as and when uh, that uh, score comes in. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are some students who had applied in uh, phase one, but they had deferred their interview to phase two. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So they also will be considered in uh, phase two. Okay. And the application form will ask you to fill up everything else. So if you've already taken a CAT exam and you had not applied in phase one or an XAT or a GMAT for that matter, or even an ATMA, then you can still apply in phase two. Uh, it's not like, you know, only if it is open for CMAT people. Um, so that's about, you know, uh, who can apply in phase two and uh, who will yeah. be considered. Mm -hmm. Also phase one results will be out in the month of March, like we had mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of March. So those students who don't, uh, let's say, make it uh, in the phase one uh, merit list, uh, they will be considered in phase two merit list again. Uh, does this mean that we have to give the uh, interview once more for phase two? The answer to that is no. Okay, we will consider your uh, scores and we'll come out with the joint merit list in uh, phase two. So if you make it in that, uh, then you're in. So I hope that part uh, of who can apply yeah. uh, yes. is clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're filling the uh, Wellinger application form, one uh, very uh, important thing is please think through, uh, apart from the factual information about your uh, 10th, 12th graduation, uh, if you have any other uh, post-graduation or any other qualification, there is enough place in the application uh, where you can bring this, uh, put this out. So even if you have a post-graduation, you can mention it in the application because this year I'm seeing that there are quite a few students with a, a post-graduation, a, a master's in something which who are also applying. So uh, make, make sure that you mention it. And also if you have any specialized certifications, etc. See, because there are so many students, it is not possible for an application to customize it to everybody's uh, profile. Yes. So there are certain windows which mm -hmm. are kept open for students uh, to showcase their strengths. So despite all the questions that we ask, we do ask, is there anything else uh, that you think the application does not cover and you want to showcase? I find that many students leave it empty. And then later when they come for the interview, when they're invited for the interview, there they're explaining to the panelists that they have so many other things. So that's like an afterthought and it's not a great practice and it will not get captured in the written application. So my suggestion, or rather, I insist that all of you take the trouble of putting it in uh, the application and whatever you wish to carry along with you to uh, support that, carry, because not everything we will ask for supporting. Normally, the Institute will ask for supporting for 10th, 12th graduation, yes. uh, and we will ask you for supporting for work experience. And of course, your uh, entrance test scores. So other than that, no other additional supportings are, uh, and if you have extracurricular activities, uh, we ask, you know, 
the you know it's really funny abhi when we are talking about extra curricular activities a lot of students they mention they have won this prize or this award and they put a photograph of a medal yeah <laughs> okay it doesn't say anything <laughs> it just has a beautiful design it does sometimes even doesn't have the name of the award which has won so i also went to amazon and got a few such medals <laughs> so please understand that we want to appreciate the students uh, for what they have done but you have to uh, as a student help us also uh, give you those points so make sure that you have a written certificate or you have enough uh, evidence that a third person Uh, can fairly judge saying yes this is possible otherwise it just looks like a you know a, what you call lack of understanding of what is an award in the first place of course and award mm -hmm. and participation are two different things mm -hmm. so uh, students need to recognize that we have kept space in the application for whatever participations you want to mention and there is a separate uh section where we ask you to mention your award so there are two different things i also run the marathon every year but i don't get any uh you know i am not a gold medalist or a bronze or whatever so you have to please understand there is a difference in the two and if you were a winner and if the participant and the winner got the same points you know would you be happy about it obviously not so we have to uh, appreciate people for whatever they have achieved so take the pain to make sure that whatever you are entering is accurate even in your 10th 12th graduation please don't go by what you remember take out that mark sheet that's why we ask people to you know update the uh, upload the uh, score cards and all of that see what your university has given and do it according to that don't don't convert on i think it is like that so that might just uh, you know be a waste of time for you and uh, unnecessarily cause you stress later on uh these are the basics now apart from that in the application there are a few uh, questions that are mm -hmm. asked and i also did a reiki of uh, you know ap applications of other institutions uh, because some of the students said oh wellinger asked so many questions <laughs> yeah and i looked up other institutions and they all asked a lot of questions so i said yeah i mean uh, in fact uh, that's like a cheat sheet for your interview if you uh, think smartly uh, of course some people are trying to use chat gpt even for this but uh, my point is whether chat gpt no chat gpt when you go there is nobody who can replace you in a personal interview so if chat gpt has helped you great but your personality and what you say has to match that so i cannot uh, you know say i built the eiffel tower and not know the first thing about civil engineering actually so you have to uh, be absolutely clear that what you are written what you are writing over there is an extension of uh, who you really are and these questions are genuinely pointers for what you can expect in an interview so what are your strengths and weaknesses why do you want to do management uh, and the application is already out so all these questions can be seen by anybody uh, and if you are applying for a particular program then what do you know about this industry let us say you are applying for retail or you are applying for e business a lot of students don't know much about e business uh, that's a revelation to me uh, because i thought this generation is native to technology but e business is not about you know uh, only coding and all of that e business is about creating technology solutions for any form of business because without technology today it's impossible for any industry to grow and scale so you don't really have to be a coder or you don't have to be only an engineer to get into that program if you like retail uh, and you also enjoy technology you can take up e business and uh, you know if you take that up uh, you can end up working with a it uh, firm or it it es firm like your infosys or the cognizance of the world or you could end up working uh, with the retail sector so when you are marking the program preference uh, please try to understand what each program uh, offers you and uh, the institute website uh, has specific information on this 
and what kind what is the profile and what kind of job opportunities you will get at the end of the program be clear about that in your head and then you mark the program preferences so some of the students uh, you are confused how to go ahead marking this program preference actually that is a section which a lot of people are in dilemma so my uh, suggestion to them is is the program info important for you or the campus city important for you so for you let uh, four of the programs which we are having in the bangalore campus are also available in the mumbai campus and both the campuses as far as placements goes are competitive and if you look at the placement figures the average packages it might be a lakh or 2 lakh difference is there i'm not denying that but it's not like you know bangalore is getting average of 4 5 lakhs or something like that it is also getting an average of about 11 lakhs 10 lakhs for different programs so if you are a fresher this should really then not be your deterrent so if you are looking at where you are going to get placed the companies which the bangalore campus offers or mumbai is equally competitive and also the package putting that aside now what do you really want to what kind of job you want to end up in then my suggestion is uh, don't look at whether mumbai or bangalore then you focus on the program so if your interest is you know okay i want to get up and get into e business or i want to get into uh, research and business analytics or i want to get into uh, your um, business design okay then you put both these higher order in your preference or pgdm for that matter i find lot of students mark pgdm as the first option score because that seems to be the safe bet uh, if you know anything about statistics <laughs> that's the program that almost everybody of applies to uh, so that you is going to get the longest so therefore you have to assess your own uh, percentile capabilities interest and choose the first preference in a manner where your chances of conversion are higher and where you really want to be not just for the heck of it okay if you want to still mark pgdm there's not nobody stopping you but that's one way of looking at it next they mark pgdm bangalore many of them and when they are offered pgdm bangalore then they are like no 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 but i wanted to stay in mumbai only yeah so boss then mark the second option as the program in bombay only if your intention to go to bangalore is not high so think when you are marking preference say imagine you have got admission in that course will you take it mark in that order of preference so if city is important to you mark the programs according to the city otherwise mark it according to the preference of the program which you really want to get it and if both are 50 50 which is what most students say uh, then you uh, mark uh, you know like e business uh, bangalore i want to get into first if i don't get in bangalore i'm okay with bombay then you mark it like that okay and there are four programs which are very specific only to mumbai uh, which is retail media entertainment healthcare and rural and this year i mean after phase 1 i can tell you this that there are a lot of students who have marked this in the top four or five preferences and i can see that their education qualifications or their background both freshers and people with experience uh, are also mapping to some extent uh, with them uh, but it's not like we are only looking for you know agri business graduates in the rural program in the past we have had 50% of the rural program with engineers and they are doing really well uh, so for example we i remember the 1719 batch uh, we had a, lady, a girl called rachna kumari uh, she was a economics uh, graduate uh, from wellinga she went on to london school of economics to do her uh, summer program she interned uh, uh, you know she interned in uh, a consulting firm and she also from campus got into a consulting firm which was eny yeah okay so everybody can have a part if a program like rural is there which are the sectors that will recruit you top four sectors in rural i can tell you number one is bssi your banking finance uh, insurance and financial services because these are the people who are servicing the rural segment 
some of the people saying the myth is that you know mujhe gaon mein jaake ghar kharidna padega and i'll have to you know stay there you will certainly have to go around and uh, understand this uh, market how people buy sell any product whether financial product or a bottle of water but at the same time your role is going to be how can you blend rural and make that market possible for a lot of companies which are looking at that market uh so number one sector for rural is bfsi number two for them is uh, technology sector it it es number 3 is consulting and analytics companies uh, or roles in uh, manufacturing companies or uh, pharma companies which are looking at rural markets uh, then you have the agri tech companies and uh, food uh, food and consumer uh, product companies which recruit from uh, your rural program so look at which sector is recruiting that will help you make a decision and if you are getting an opportunity to participate in the placements of that sector then most certainly you should apply for it yes uh, and at wellinger uh, what i think students know as or don't know as umbrella placement so uh, it's not like if you are in the media program or you are in a healthcare program or retail program you cannot apply for other companies what programs the uh, you know the company wants to pick from is decided by the company so it's like an overall uh, so for example when an axis bank comes or an icici or a ernst and young comes they are open to meeting students across uh, all the programs and do they make a differentiation in the packages across programs no they do not they make a differentiation on the basis of the role uh that is uh, you know taken up uh, or that that is being offered so that is what differs not because you are from a x program you will get a better package or anything if you have a, a relevant experience then that will also be uh, valued there are times when uh, specific companies come and ask for students from a program when the role demands it so they may say that i am looking for a pro, uh, i am looking for students from analytics or i am looking for students from rural or media because i want uh, somebody with digital marketing uh, knowledge yeah. so that is very much possible so you should never look at uh, non core pgdm as a minus it's always a plus at least at wellinger that's the that's the story hmm? this is from your application how you fill it and yeah. therefore what you fill in that application is extremely important why i told you about all these programs is uh, you know how can you mark your preferences and therefore reading up a little bit about the sector uh, and most of you have uh, in shorts news so just go up and look what is happening in the sector and use that to make your uh, response a little more uh, interesting to read and then the next thing is uh you know after you filled in your application well you read it properly and then you submit once you're shortlisted uh and this uh, phase 2 shortlisting will be uh, percentile based only however if the cmat result is delayed uh then we will conduct the uh, interview process after the cmat exam but may happen before the results are declared yes so uh, therefore you know we will take a punt on the basis of the overall profile of the student and we'll call you for the interviews and then when the cmat results are out you can just punch in your percentile and we'll add up that and then calculate your overall merit when you're calling you for an interview what is our or rather before that there is something called a piq that uh, wellinger has yes cat will be accepted for phase 2 so uh, piq is a uh, pre interview questionnaire so if you see the application form has everything about why you want to do this program why that program what is your academics what is your focus all of that which is more about what you want to do the piq is about who you are as a person so what is your style of leadership uh, how do you handle crisis how do you handle conflict uh, how do you manage time what is your understanding of resources so these are largely situations and choices that you make and this comes to a person basis overall 
grooming an experience that you have had in life and your understanding of a problem so you know we may give you four things and tell you uh, how would you want to you know prioritize these four things so there can all the priorities may be right but uh, it reflects what is more important for you and again here it's not going to be uh, you know what you call judgmental it is about trying to look at your personality type and also that is the person in you and this piq report is given to the interviewer also they have access to that and they will see that uh, piq analysis uh, and what responses you have given and they will use that in the interview to talk to you so it's largely an input to the interviewer so this is also a good chance for you to just be candid and not overthink it a lot of students just overthink it so just avoid that uh we will be having a face to face interview process only uh and therefore i think it's a huge advantage because you bring in your own personality also into the room and uh, the panelists also get a opportunity to you know uh not be worried about whether you are seen heard properly uh and technology issues just talking to each other so it's going to be an offline process once the piq is done a piq is a must because that's an input along with the application which goes to the uh, panelist at the interview stage uh, or rather when you're coming in person there are two uh, processes one is the uh, group activity and another is the personal interview so in the group activity uh, we may be giving you a small uh, caselet or a situation or an infographic or some such thing which requires you to analyze things critically and share your thoughts so it is not uh, always just going to be one line topic where you have to think so some resources are given to you in the form of an input and you are expected to think through uh, and talk about it so uh, this at this stage in the group activity we are looking at your communication skills we are looking at your ability to uh, think critically and uh, you know evaluate the situation so that these are two really big pieces and how are you communicating within a group um we don't eliminate people after the group activity so some students were you know saying uh, we should be eliminated no uh, this is not a interview process and it is not a spot offer so if i had a spot offer we would eliminate but we are here to look at your holistic personality <coughs> so therefore we will not eliminate everybody then goes to the interview process and there is only one interview and that interview panel will interview you for all the preferences and programs that you have indicated in the application form and on the basis of whatever you have uh, indicated over there so in the interview process again uh, ma'am by the way uh, some important tips if you can share for the preparation for the group activity uh, is there any more okay. teams can do in a cell in a group right that panelists will look at from which perspective they will be judged upon so any perspective that you want to share to students you want me to respond to that yeah yeah yes yes okay <clears throat> so one of the uh, you know important things that we are looking for in a group activity is we are looking at your ability to uh, analyze the data that is given to you okay if if it is a situation or if it is a, a what you call a data that is given to you analyze that and uh, use that data to speak okay there are certain thoughts or questions that the person at the end of the a uh, topic would the panelist will tell you another very important thing is they are judging you on the basis of how you are interacting within that group so don't have to continuously look at the panelists and talk the panelist is looking at all of you this is something uh, part of body language where you have to talk to the group and get the group to engage with you in the conversation and not uh, worry about you know whether the panelist is looking at you they are facing you so they'll know what you're doing another important thing is that when you open the <clears throat> discussion if you are somebody 
uh, who is a little afraid of getting in the middle of a discussion, my suggestion is open it. <clears throat> because when you open the discussion, at least whatever points you're having uh, are, are fresh, okay? <clears throat> and usually some question, uh, one question that students is, what if I don't know anything about the topic? Yeah. So to avoid this, what if I don't know anything about the topic? We have, uh, you know, framed different types of topic such that anybody can contribute to it. Because what we are really looking forward to is basis, whatever is given to you, how can you use that information, analyze it and speak about it? The second thing is your ability to communicate. Uh, again, if you feel that, you know, this is something I'm not able to analyze, I'm not able to talk about it at all, etc., then wait for a couple of people to speak. You may then get a lead on to what is, what is the soul Jamburi about? Yeah. And then you can, once you've understood that, okay, you will be in a position to at least articulate basis of what others are saying. Yes. So you may have an opinion. Okay, this is about, the third tip I will give you is, see, any topic which is given, uh, may, most of the students, you know, we tend to think pros and cons, plus and minus of that topic. So any topic is beyond just plus and minus. It is about who all does it affect. So let us say tomorrow, if there is a price hike in the, uh, you know, in milk prices and uh, some situation is given to you, etc. You don't know anything about dairy industry. You have no clue about what is the price of milk that comes to your house. You have no clue. How do you contribute in this? So, you know, one thing that price hike is certainly never a welcome thing. Uh, you also know that milk is something that is consumed by a lot of people across from the poorest of poor to the richest of rich. Uh, who does it impact? It impacts the seller. It, so think about different stakeholders. Kisko farak padta hai? It impacts the seller. It impacts what strata of society. It impacts uh, even the vendor. How will it, will it, will the demand go down? So think logically. This logical thinking is what we are expecting you to exhibit. We are not expecting you to exhibit or come up with the best or the correct solution also. Got the point. Okay. Just yeah. try to connect the dots and try to see what is the story that you you are able to uh, you know think of on the basis of information uh, given to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? So these are two, three things, communication, connect, talk to people, and we are not looking for solution. We are looking for your viewpoint. And that viewpoint should be substantiated with why you think it is so. Certainly, yeah. There are a couple of questions, ma'am. Uh, one is a very anonymous question. I think it's relevant for everyone. How important is work experience for your consideration? So for hmm. someone to get selected, is it a mandate in terms no, of- it's not a mandate. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly not a mandate, but it is a plus to have work experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the interview process, certainly there are, uh, you know, people with work experience will have certain uh, point advantages. Mm -hmm. So yes, but it's not a mandate. It's not like if you don't have experience, <clears throat> you won't be selected or uh, you're not eligible. Mm -hmm. Nothing of that sort. No, this, I mean, there's also a sub question to it. But we are looking at full time qualify? experience. Yeah, how do you qualify work experience? Huh. So, work experience after your completion of graduation is what we are looking for. And we are looking for full time uh, experience after completion of graduation, either in an organization, not necessarily a listed one also. Listed is best, but then other than that, even if it is your family owned business. I want to see what you did in that business. We get students who bring in certificates from their parents saying that, you know, they have worked over there. And when we dig deep into what work is uh, was done during the interview, there's nothing that comes out. So we don't value such. So it is not certificate hai to marks milega. Nahin. But certificate bhi chahiye. And the interviewer is going to uh, dig about your what you did, what you learned. Tell me details about your business. Even if it is a dairy business, my father is running a dairy, uh, you know, store, and I was sitting in the store, and I'm a shopkeeper, 
and i have worked there for 2 years before getting uh, into an mba program then i will want to know everything about dairy business from you guys i want to know what are the top brands what are their prices how do people buy everything we will ask you because if you have worked there for about a year and a half year year and a half then you will certainly know the business so don't try to fake it uh, it's not going to work <laughs> How about this question? Trading yeah. in stock market. Hmm. We consider this as experience. Ah uh, no, we cannot consider that uh, self trading and all that. You cannot. So you can put this as a strength, hmm. uh, or you can put it as additional uh, trade that you have developed. But we will not consider that experience unless you are working with a firm. Got it. Okay. Um, there's also a question on the application. Does Wellinger gives PI call before the CMAT results? If applying via CMAT scope only. Yeah, so uh, I'm counting on CMAT at least declaring. Yeah. Uh, the date of the exam is it declared yet? I don't think so, right? Yeah. No, no. Not From yet. what I know, it's no. not. But I am expecting it to happen in the first week of April. Yeah. And going by last year, they declared the result on 29th of May, April. Yeah. So I don't want to delay the interview process uh, beyond April. So we will call people uh, for the interview before that. Mm -hmm. So what will we do is we will use the profile uh, selection basis what we have used in phase one. Yes. And hopefully by then the results will be out. So yeah. then vacancies or anything will allow the students to also apply with their CMAT. Later. On the same note, ma'am. Apply meaning uh, update. Huh? Yeah. Uh, update the uh, the cutoffs of various examination right from CAT till that one. Yes. Yes. And that too is it going to be jumping for all the all the programs or is it like? differentiating for the uh, it will be different yeah, yeah. so cat cutoff is different i think we have also put up on the website very transparently mm -hmm. cat cutoff uh, is different for different programs as well as uh, uh, different campuses uh, yeah. cat and zat is same uh, yeah. cat zat and gmat is the same cutoff across all programs mm -hmm. uh, then your uh, atma and cmat is on similar lines yeah. So please take a look at that. And yeah, thanks for asking that question, Abhijit. So because I also saw somebody say I have 70 percentile. So you know yeah. that you have 70 percentile. So there's no way you're going to get into uh, a program where the cutoff is above 70. So apply only for those programs where the cutoff is acceptable. Yeah, yeah. And what is the expected cutoff for CMAT? If you can just tell. 85 for Mumbai. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. I think that's also mentioned, but yeah, it's 85. From yeah. Mumbai, uh, it, yeah, it's 85. Yeah, 85 and Bangalore, it is 80. Bangalore is 80. 80, yeah. So, some, some final tips for the interview preparation, uh, if you can help us. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. Uh, were we lesson? Oh, just a second. I saw one question is volunteership counted in work experience. Yes, I think there was. Uh, and how should I put it? I have uh, done in wildlife, how to connect it with this program. So uh, volunteership, if, if you have volunteered and they've given you a experience certificate and it has been a full-time thing, then it can be counted. But if it is not, if it is, uh, you know, part-time, you can put it separately and you will get evaluated and your overall interview scores will certainly get enhanced by putting that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. If it's in wildlife, why did you do it? How did it help you? Uh, this should be very clear to you. And uh, another thing is, how can you connect it with this program? So I don't know which program uh, Aparna, I think her name is, uh, wants to do. But then everything in life doesn't have to connect to a program. It can also connect to your personality. So what has been your learning from uh, from the internship that you did and what are the qualities as a person it has helped you build? So, you know, a person with leadership qualities, for example, uh, is appreciated across uh, programs, not doesn't have to. So everything doesn't have to be only program, program, program. It can be about the person. Of course. And can I put in CA article chip in work experience section? Only if it is after graduation. No, and if it is not full time, no. So CA article chip will not be counted. Uh, because it's usually not a full-time thing. If it is after graduation uh, and you're doing that full-time, then yes, but then you put it, that uh, get a certificate that it is a full-time uh, work that you're doing. Full-time you're occupied with the CFO. Yeah.
majorly all the answers I think we have covered. Yeah. Uh, apprenticeship is also uh, yes. After graduation with 10 hours yeah. daily. I know uh, CA yeah. articleships are almost like slave uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slave work but get the certificate uh, ayush yeah after graduation only we will count for mat we are not taking atma what is cut off 85 85 for mumbai 80 for bangalore and uh, there is a group two which is uh, retail business design and uh, media for that it is 80 for mumbai also so yeah uh, so final okay. tips for the interview preparation how should people prepare for the interview rounds upcoming ahead so preparation for interview round number one I told you you know your application is your first uh, bet uh, secondly uh, I would say take a sheet of paper and write down the points that you are afraid of like how you have put in this question see all these questions are these are either I am not clear or I am you know afraid of this so write it down and um, write a response to it as to uh, why, what, what really happened. And uh, if it is authentic, it will be heard and understood. Uh, secondly, uh, try to also showcase uh, whatever experience you have had. How does it connect to your future goal? Not necessarily to a program only. Third is if you are applying for a specific program, then uh, try and practice some uh, questions on, you know, related to that program. For example, uh, if you are applying for retail, you know, who are the top five players in retail? What has happened in retail industry after COVID? These are generic things which you should be aware of. Uh, if you are a finance, uh, you know, student or you want to pursue finance and you're really interested in that, uh, then some problem solving capability might be uh, put up in an interview and they will judge you on that. Also, what I have seen is, uh, you know, different panels uh, look at the students differently, but eventually they are only looking for you to help them make up their mind on the marks. So while they may seem strict, tough, some may be a little lenient uh, when they are talking, uh, the evaluation is always uh, you know, a fair because they are provided scales on how to evaluate the students. So you should not be carried away either by the leniency or by the uh, strictness. Uh, another important thing is uh, don't get into the framework, you know, uh, I would say frame of mind where you're asking the next candidate, you know, what did that person ask you? How did you say? How did they ask you this? It's good to know a little bit but don't psych yourself with all this before going into an interview because your application is different. You are different. And what you're looking for is who are you and what you want to do. So even if the previous candidate has done really badly, it will not affect you. If they have, uh, in fact, anything that you do might look better in front of that candidate. So uh, don't bother about that. Just focus on what you have written and how you're presenting yourself and try to have a conversation with that person, relax, tell yourself that you're going inside to have a conversation and talk to the panelist about it. Don't become super casual also and don't become super, uh, you know, uptight also. The other thing Abhijit is a lot of students are asking, maybe COVID has done this to them. Okay, how should we dress for an interview? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I think my student will, who's there, Srini uh, will yeah, be able to me. answer that much better. Yeah. yeah, because I'm probably a few generations away from you and my expectations might sound too conservative, but Srini can be more candid about it. Yeah, but I would say that is the I, I dress in a manner that you are comfortable and also make the other person feel comfortable. So uh, no shock. Uh, it, your interviews are going to be in the summers. So make sure you uh, dress comfortably, are wearing cottons. Uh, for the ladies, I would say, uh, don't wear stilettos unless you walk in them every day and you're comfortable uh, with it. Uh, wear comfortable clothing, wear neat, clean clothing, wear ironed clothing. Uh, it doesn't have to be branded. You don't, you know, we are not expecting you to come in a jacket and a tie and all of that. If that is your style, be yourself. But at the same time, 
look neat you're going in for an interview so let the focus be on your i mean the overall personality should also help you this is not the time to show off your tone jeans or your streak hair i mean that's really not the focus on that day so try not to distract people with all of that or cause a judgment issue uh, by getting into that uh, into that zone eat well before an interview and for the early morningers wellingar also provides food packets in fact to all students uh, it's important to keep yourself hydrated drink water uh, be nourished don't faint on the interview day and uh, uh, summers hai so please carry a deo smell good also to yourself okay this is a little too Sorry. personal but i'm <laughs> telling you uh, it's important and make sure you carry your application printed and all the documents associated with it and don't cause yourself stress nine out of 10 times i see students are causing self stress oh i didn't get this what do i do and you know panicking at the last minute yes yes so yes. we are there to help you but we are not here to spoon feed you you know you are post graduate students you want a package of 20 lakhs behave like the guy who deserves the 20 lakhs not a baby who needs to get a photocopy done Okay, and leave your parents home. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. So let's let's listen to Shreeni's story also, ma'am. Uh, yes, Shreeni. Shreeni is also here. Uh, Thank I, you. I think she can help you out on this question a lot better than I. Can. I think a candid <laughs> chat between the students and someone who's studying in uh, Willingham itself. Okay. It was really talking to Deepa, ma'am. Um, and I'm sure with the future progression, we'll keep more sessions. And wow. whatever you can take time out to guide the students, we'll all be very glad to listen to you again. Thank you. So I will leave, so Shreeni can be as candid as she wants to be. <laughs> so amazing, Shreeni, to have you here. So all the guys, uh, our students of IMS out here, uh, Shreeni is a second year student of Bellingcar. I think business design is the specialization what you have chosen. Uh, right. We are here to listen to your story. Uh, so we two perspective: one as an applicant, how did you look upon Bellingcar Business School? And the application stage, your interview, if you can remember something on that spot, and then how the two year journey is at V School, and how are you getting placed this year? Uh, all right. So going ahead with my experience as an applicant and as a student of Wellingar. Uh, so uh, exactly, I was at your place, guys, uh, a year ago. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, two two years ago. Uh, I was preparing for uh, SNAP, NMAT, and uh, even CMAT. I cleared Wellingar through CMAT. uh again ma'am explained you the entire process of how does the you write an essay the application uh, followed by you need to select your preferences so i guess there is some confusion between how do you select your preference uh so honestly uh, i was also very much confused but uh, as our human tendency or b school tendency the thinking process we always think that core mein jana uh so that mentality was bursted when i entered wellinger i also wanted to go to pgdm core otherwise i was not even going to take admission uh, but then i had a, a basic idea about what is the design thinking uh, i got a chance from my previous company uh, i i have had a, a decent experience before uh, joining wellinger so uh, that company sent me to a, a mdp course that was at iim lucknow there i learned about uh, design thinking and how it is evolving in india as a whole and how companies are you know uh, exp- like taking people from this course so that interested me and then i found that wellingers is offering very different uh, you know bunch of courses so then business design was one of the courses and my preference uh, followed in a way starting from core uh, first preference as core followed by rba because data analyst business analyst a lot many companies are hiring today uh, third co- preference was uh, my business design i got admission in rba but then i did not take uh, into it and i gone i selected business design because i had a bit of idea of what design thinking is so mera uh, i uh, understanding aisa tha that i, I will study only uh, designing i study only that you know designing tools and everything so that was a problem for me uh, followed by that i uh, when i entered into business design mujhe ek cheez samajh mein aayi that irrespective of the course you are into you are studying the core subjects whatever core subjects you study in first year of pgdm core you study all those subjects in your first year then you have additional subjects of let's say rba hai ya ebiz hai uh, rural hai healthcare hai mne for that matter or even business design 
you study additional subjects of those now this is uh, what business design or any any course uh, had busted my myth for uh, following that uh, as an applicant uh, a piq is a personality test it is a situation based test so whatever you think just think that when well, uh, give the test you you actually don't need to prepare about it yes you need to be well versed with uh, Q- piq ke baad mein mere time pe ek chhota sa essay aata tha likhne ke liye uh, you know 100 or 200 words of essay that i had to write Uh, I'm pretty not sure about abhi kya aane wala hai, but uh, you need to be वो थोड़ा current affairs related topic होगा. They will judge you upon your subject knowledge, your uh, grammar or maybe your vocab or something. तो P I Q होगा उसके बाद then you will get a call. Uh, I got a call profile based as well and I even cleared my C M A T uh, cut off. Uh, so my percentile was around eighty nine point something. Uh, after that. i was uh, into that uh, group activity group discussion it was an online process for me but that online process was also a smooth process uh, currently i witnessed the phase 1 process as well they keep it very seamless uh, the group post the group activity as ma'am mentioned wo elimination nahi hota you get into the interview you need to be confident you need to present your real self um not even confidence but uh, your communication also ma- matters because as you are entering the corporate world um your the way you communicate the way you deliver is also very much important so being an applicant my confidence level were not even over were not even under you have to maintain that thing uh, even if you are you know uh, at times not sure about the answer uh, to your interview question you need to be polite and you need not show that you are nervous of not knowing the answer so these are a few tips that you can you know um, carry while you go for the interview at wellinger um how did i shortlist between the colleges or what campus uh, mumbai because i belong i belong to this place uh, i belong to actually vadodara but mumbai have a special place in my heart um, apart from that uh, which course so as i mentioned i had that bit of background so don't have that typical uh, thinking of i want to go in only core because uh, umbrella we have umbrella placements you you have a pool placement you can apply to company you want to so uh, you think well uh, like in business design you have sectors hiring from real estate it banking financial services insurance retail e-commerce every sector you get like company from every sector you get currently in um, so now coming to as a student my journey was very smooth um out i i, uh, I participated in every event as possible i participated in too many competitions so Uh, that will help you ace your profile before the placements in w- first year you get to do lot many projects you get to do gcl which is you know a very a uh, differentiator f- a differentiator from uh, other colleges uh, gcl is basically a civil citizen leadership program uh, that program you you actually get to work with uh, companies uh, from the market so i worked with one of the companies from financial services industry uh the the marketing team or their uh, you know uh, team sits with you they give you a problem statement you need to actually work so we worked on the marketing strategy for a general insurance company to be precise uh, we created entire marketing strategy for them uh, we gave them solutions and to be very precise they implemented our solution so you get that you know a unique uh, you know you can position yourself in a unique way or uh, this all these things will help you after one year at the at the time of your placements uh, so gcl is one of the you know usps of wellinger that you uh, get to do which other colleges probably are not offering so this becomes your one of the life projects Add, and adding uh, in addition to this you also get a summer internship placement i got myself in uh, icici bank that was a very smooth experience and the best was i got to do it offline बिकॉज वो जब ऐसा हाइब्रिड ट्रांजेक्शन था तो मेनी ऑफ माई बैचमेट डिड नॉट गेट अ चांस टू यू नो डू इट ऑफलाइन सो आई गॉट दैट पियर टू पियर लर्निंग पीपल फ्रॉम अदर कॉलेज फ्रॉम अदर बी स्कूल गॉट टूगेदर वर्क टूगेदर ऑन अ प्रोजेक्ट सो दैट एस आई पी वॉज अ वेरी वंडरफुल एक्सपीरियंस फॉर मी was that i got to do mock interviews mock pis um, you know such uh, uh, specialization based discussions then in business design you get a vertical that you can choose so uh, it is inter now if you if you are interested in let's say marketing of financial services for example so you can pick a financial services ka or banking ka ek vertical 
and at the same time you can pick a vertical of marketing so you know you do, you can do this thing uh, in such courses which will help you understand uh, the business the industry as well and the work or the profile that you have to uh, work into so it is functional plus generic now what were my mantras for you know getting placed my, getting myself placed and getting the ba- batch placed because i was one of the council members as well the placement council members so talking about that front i had focused on three things uh, first of first was uh, the company the brand name that i want to get, get placed with second was um, my profile that i was interested to uh, to work for and third was the uh, payment the uh, amount the package basically so in tino me se i had to compromise on to one thing that was pretty sure now that you need to decide ki kaun sa sector mil raha hai uske samne kaun sa package mil raha hai uske samne mujhe kaun sa company mil raha hai what you can compromise into see honestly guys we cannot get everything that we want out of anywhere but you you need to figure out as soon as you enter you will at least understand what i don't where i don't belong to what i don't want to do so what not to do if you have figured out what to do will be very clear it will be a smooth transition for you guys uh so yes that was uh, my journey throughout so i i was one of those who got the highest package in the uh, business design as a course uh, which i was not expecting myself but yeah cutting short on to where i don't want to go uh, where which industry i don't belong to which sector i don't belong to i got a clarity immediately after my sip so now if you uh, you know remove the options that you have you are left with the only options uh, that you you will have to select so this was more or less my journey uh, business design as a course has a very good faculty uh, you know the dean is very dynamic uh, he has a wonderful uh, experience in the industry um, so overall you get mentoring you get external internal mentoring you get to do a lot many alumni sessions or conclaves so that interaction that communication that entire process of molding yourself into you know corporate leader or a manager the future managers that we talk about today that that this mba is the that process that will mold you into some i when ma'am was leaving i heard about how to dress so the the dress i am into i will never leave this thing now because that is you know inculcated in us today we don't uh, you know ask these question that kal event hai tumhe kya pehno so dress well uh, where you are confident nervousness nahi lagni chahiye so i guess uh, that would be my uh, journey agar kuch question hai to i'll be happy to help but uh, just don't be rigid on to uh, core or ebiz or only one course at a time be dynamic first decide that where you fall into kafi log koi niche uh, usse bhi belong karte honge koi aviation industry ka ho sakta hai kisi ka bachelors ya koi hospitality se aa raha hoga so do uh, even if you belong to a niche uh, industry or a sector that's fine you can follow that as your dream or a career and if, if you are not looking forward to uh, you can apply to any course but have a clarity that's what my message to all would be okay uh we'll finally conclude by taking your advice let's say um uh, shini if you have some uh, tips for advice for the students who are looking forward for joining the journey at v school what should they be prepared for um first of all don't fear anything the v school interviews are very smooth the panelists are very understanding uh, but just don't take them for granted uh, they judge you not exactly on everything that is current affairs based kyunki sabse zyada mera dar wahi tha ki i even if i read newspapers or even if i don't we are not updated on everything that is happening around the world right so you need to be well versed you need to know how do you present your answer or deliver your answer so let's say quick example of i was asked about uh, if, if we give you an admission in media and entertainment tell us one um, trend that is happening in the entertainment industry i did not want to answer something that is very you know uh, very cliche honestly i wanted to answer something that is unique so i took an example of a podcast because i had a habit of listening to podcast so i spoke about how podcast can disrupt the industry or how even currently google podcast or spotify is helping people you know gain knowledge so i spoke about podcast i gave an example of the podcast who, uh, whom i was listening to so as a unique answers thode frame karo you will be able to crack just don't be very cliche or just don't be very you know tell them a story 
सी बेसिकली वी आर हेयर टू सेल आर सेल्स इफ यू इफ यू जस्ट से कि मेरा लॉन्ग टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म गोल ये है कि मेरे स्ट्रेंथ और वीकनेसेस ये है सो दैट इज टिपिकली रेज्यूम ए डॉक्यूमेंट ऐसा मत करना टेल योर स्टोरी बी अ बिट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मल फ्रॉम वे यू बिलोंग टू देन एड सम फॉर्मल पॉइंट दैट दिस इज माई जर्नी सो फार कीप इट यू नो सो दैट सामने वाला भी इंटरेस्टेड इन लिसनिंग टू यू सो कीप अ स्टोरी टेल योर स्टोरी कीप शो द अप्स एंड डाउन हाउ डिड यू manage going through that uh, you know entire journey of your life that more uh, panelists are interested in knowing you about for very amazing i think we have covered all the possible aspects right from someone who would possibly scream you they down in front of you deepa ma'am plus at the same time someone who's gone through the journey uh quality student shelly so it was great listening to you again shelly uh, i'm sure with yeah. the upcoming time we'll keep more engagement sessions and whenever you have got time please come over and have uh, this uh, Engagement session possible wherever you can. Sure, okay. thank, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Wish you the best for the upcoming application down for B School. Thank you. Bye bye.